Hi boys and girls, it's Mr. Wasserman, and today we are looking at Homelinks 211, that's Unit 2, Lesson 11, Drawing Quadrilaterals. Okay, so let's take a look at the first question right here. It says, a parallelogram is a quadrilateral that has two pairs of parallel sides. Draw a parallelogram. Okay, so I'm actually going to use this space to draw two parallelograms to prove a point. Okay, now when you hear the word parallelogram, a lot of you might think of a shape that looks like this. You've got some diagonal lines like so, okay, and then another pair of diagonal lines that intersect with the first set right here. So a parallelogram would have one, two, three, four uh, uh, vertices or four angles formed from the four sides that uh, connect together, okay? That's what we think of when we think of a parallelogram. A parallelogram has two sets of parallel sides. We've got one right here, parallel here and here, and then we have another pair of parallel sides here and here, okay? Here's another parallelogram that you may not have considered. And that is the square. Ugh, that is an awful looking square. Let's try that again. There we go. Well, that's a little better. Draw on this freehand. Okay. This, too, is a parallelogram. Okay. Now, we know it to be a square because it's got four right angles, four uh, angles, and it's got four sides that are the exact same length. Okay, but that does not change the fact that it has two pairs of parallel sides. Here's a parallel pair of sides. Here's a second pair of sides that are parallel, like so. Okay, so a square can also be a parallelogram. Okay, here's an analogy for you. All dogs are mammals. They're warm-blooded. They give live birth. They're covered in fur. All cats are mammals too. They too are warm-blooded, give life birth, covered in fur. All cats are mammals. All dogs are mammals. Not all mammals are cats, right? Horse is a mammal, which is neither a dog or a cat. So when we classify uh, quadrilaterals, or when we think about their properties, we got to think about what they have in common, okay? So this leads into question number two. Can a parallelogram have right angles? Well, as I've shown you right up here, the answer is, of course, yes, it can. Explain. Okay, so what am I explaining here? Well, I'm explaining the fact that a square has two pair. Of parallel sides, which is the definition of a parallelogram. Okay, just like it says up top, it has two pair of parallel sides. So I have proven that to be true. Now, could a quadrilateral have four obtuse angles? Explain that. Well, I would then challenge you to try drawing one with four. Uh, obtuse angle. So let's try. Here is an obtuse angle. Here's another obtuse angle. Here's a third obtuse angle right here. So if you look at these angles, one, two, three. But here's my problem. I've already hit four sides. One, two, three, four. Okay? And they're not connecting. It's not a closed polygon. A definition of a quadrilateral that it is a closed shape okay so one of two things needs to happen either I have to create more sides like that to, to create my obtuse angles okay or I have to close my polygon so that it is sealed up and then I lose my obtuse angle so if I were to recreate this drawing right here okay with my up two singles, one, two, okay, 
and then I close it up like this, like so. So I have my four angles and my four sides. You'll notice that two of my sides are no longer obtuse. They're actually acute. I made myself a trapezoid. Okay? So question 2B, could a quadrilateral have four obtuse angles? The answer is no. And then you would explain, basically using words to describe what you have. But here's another fact you may or may not know about quadrilaterals. It can't have four obtuse angles because of this. All quadrilaterals have an interior, that's the inside, total measurement of angles equaling 360 degrees. Okay, what does that mean? Well, let's go back to our square for a moment. Okay, so if I have a square and a square is made up of four right angles, we know that each right angle is 90 degrees. So that means each of these four angles is 90 degrees, and when you combine 90 plus 90 plus 90 plus 90, or 90 times 4, oh, we're using some multiplication here, 9 times 4 is 36, so 90 or 9 tens, or 9 with a 0 behind it, times 4 is going to give me 36 with a 0 behind it, or 360 degrees, okay? Now, if I look at my parallelogram over here, I have two angles that are obtuse. Now, let's just make up an angle. Let's say this is, oh, let's say it's about 120 degrees, okay? So if this is 120 degrees, then we'll say this, too, is also 120 degrees. Now, 120 plus 120 is 240, okay? So if a quadrilateral has a total of only... 360 degrees, and these two angles here are acute, must be much less than 120, and cannot exceed a total of 360. So let's make a number sentence that shows that to be true. So 120 degrees plus 120 degrees plus two unknowns equals 360. Didn't leave myself enough room, but we're moving forward. So, again, 120 plus 120 is going to give me 240 degrees. So, 240 degrees plus something plus something equals 360. Okay? I've got a addition problem with some missing add-ins. So, now I turn that around to a subtraction problem. 360 minus 240 gives me a total of 120, okay? Which means the combination of these two missing measurements have to be 120. Well, if I divide 120 divided by 2, or splitting it in half, that gives me 60, okay? And as you, you look at these angles right here, it's not that uh, far-fetched to think that an acute angle like this right here would be about 60 degrees, okay? So if you are ever creating a quadrilateral and you know the measure of at least one side, you can probably figure out the rest of the sides knowing that your grand total of all four angle measurements has to be 360, okay? I'll let you try problems three and four on your own. Let's jump down to uh, the practice down at the bottom. Here we have some multiplication, and we actually kind of did a little of that up here when we were figuring out the measure of all the angles in our square. When I'm multiplying with a, a number in the tens, and it conveniently ends in a zero, 
I just have to know my single digit multiplication facts to find my answer. So, for example, if I know that 5 times 3 gives me 15, then I know that 5 times 3 tens is going to give me 15 tens, or 15 with a zero behind it, otherwise known as 150. If I know that 8 times 6 is 48, which by the end of fourth grade you will all know by heart, then I know that 80, or 8 tens, is going to give me 480, or 48 tens, or 48 with a zero behind it. Easy peasy, lemon squeezy, right? So that's all you need to remember when it comes to multiplication with tens that end in zero. I'm just extending my fact by adding the zero behind my product. If you have questions about quadrilaterals, geometry, multiplication, or, you know, anything mathematical, your teacher is happy to answer those questions for you. So reach out to that math teacher, and uh, they will be happy to help you. Okay? Otherwise, we will talk again soon, friends.